Well, the race started in good weather conditions. The Gucci of Blimp overhead at the Circuit de la Sarthe. Semi-rigid airship, technically. A good start from the race leader, Tom Dillman, jumping away from pole position, but a little too ambitious, as it turned out. He would earn a drive through for that. Our pole sitter in the Porsche domination of qualifying led the GTE field, an early problem for one of our Toyotas spinning off at Indianapolis. And on a busy track contact between one of the GT Porsches and Fernando Alonso's car number 14, that would earn them a pit stop penalty that later caught out the team because they were unable to fuel at the same time that that was applied. Lots of very close racing and then a problem for Simon Pagano. The steering wheel on his rig packed up but he thoughtfully borrowed one from a friend previously and even rehearsed swapping it live in stints so he lost barely a minute before he got going again. After 29 minute red flag for a server crash, a safety car lap to get everybody back together. And then we went racing once more with the two seas motorsport car out front. And they've been part of the lead equation from the beginning of the race. So too has car number four. The Bicolos car dropped to 12th with their early penalty and fought their way back in. In the lead of the GT battle, it's not all been about Porsche. The new Ferraris haven't figured. But the Corvettes, at least one of the Corvettes, has the Roman Grosjean team. Feed Motorsport getting tangled up there in somebody else's accident. And as ever, pit lane very busy here from time to time at Le Mans. One of our front runners, car number 20, the Red Line Motorsport car, with Max Verstappen and Lando Norris, the Formula One stars in that team, battling with the number four car from Baikoles for podium spots. And as the shadows lengthened and the evening drew on, a little mistake by the Baikoles team allowed the number 20 car to have a run. Stoffel van Dorn was in the action there as well in third place. That was your lead trio covered by less than two car lengths into Indianapolis, the fastest part of the circuit. Fantastic racing. Trouble for Catherine Legg in the all-female Richard Mill team. Spinning at the chicane, no damage, but when she rejoined what she thought was a gap in traffic was not a gap. A big hit for the Roman Grosjean Corvette and a penalty for the Richard Mille all-female crew. Pit stops continuing in into the late evening and still our regular front runners from Rebellion Williams Esport, from 2Cs, from Bicoles and from Veloce were in the hunt into the darkness hours and for those doing nighttime shifts a very different way of going racing to in the daytime peripheral vision nil and traffic appearing a lot quicker than you'd expect the front running ferrari in fact the only ferrari showing any real pace to challenge anybody else the 52 car with charles leclerc the ferrari formula one driver as part of that driver lineup having problems more problems for penske that one of a couple of teams with United Autosport that's got a full four pro race driver lineup. And in the darkness, track limits hard to spot. Resulting accident for the uh, Team Project One Art car didn't delay them too much. Lots of battling at the front of the field. This is where the uh, Williams and the uh, number 20 car from Team Redline was still battling ferociously. At this stage, Team Redline very much in the hunt, but that would all go wrong for them during the darkness hours, and they would become the very first retirement from the 24 hours of Le Mans. Number 16, which had run so strongly early on in the race, Veloce Esports 2, Nominato, Stoffel van Dorn, Eamon Murphy, and Thomas Poradic. They too dropped down the order. They're now down in the mid teens. And then, after waiting for 25 minutes out of fuel in the pit lane, the Senior Tech Alpine team finally received a friend. A friendly shove down to their pit box from an old team member, Nico Lapierre, pushing them down to allow them to take fuel as he came in for his stop. Into the morning hours at Le Mans, more drama, more people getting caught up in other people's accidents. And that, unfortunately, is occasionally the fate here at Le Mans. Two Williams Esports cars making contact. And one losing a wheel. 
A big incident of the number 33, two C's motorsport car just getting away with it. Feed Motorsport, a the driver there having lost the rear wing, unknown to him, I think, uh, in a uh, reversing off at Indianapolis moment, then found out he didn't have downforce as he turned into the Porsche curves. As we went to the red flag, our race leader in GTE, the 93 Porsche, our overall race leader, the number one, Rebellion Williams Eastport.